Hi, I'm Bex from Channel Bex Bug Out Survivor. Now, what if you have a sleeping bag and it's not quite warm enough for the temperatures you want? You don't want to go out and buy a warmer bag, but you might have a couple of bits of kit in your arsenal that can increase the sleeping bag temperature. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A thicker amount of insulation in your sleeping bag means it's going to be warmer, retaining your body heat for a much longer period of time. So I'm just going to unroll my bivy bag. There are two things in here that we're going to use. I have my Gore-Tex bivy with the sleeping bag already inside. I also have a three quarter length foam pad. And over here, a little reflective, this is the bubble type. My sleeping bag is meant to have a comfort of minus 10. Even at plus 10, I find it quite, not chilly, but just not warm. And that is because the insulation is so thin. So I wouldn't really look at sleeping bags by their numbers, you know, the comfort and the survival and the extreme. If you can get eyes on on a sleeping bag, say in a surplus shop, look for a thick bag. It's the loft of it, how thick it is. The thicker, the better. If you can get a bag two inches, two and a half inches thick, it's fit for purpose. This is claiming to be minus 10 and it's very thin i have a hammock under quilt same thing it promises very low temperatures it's so paper thin it's like a jungle sleeping bag it's going to do nothing so i need to increase the actual insulation itself and look how thick just one piece of my mat is there it's hard to see on screen but that has got to be a good three quarters of an inch maybe half inch let's be conservative so once i'm inside my sleeping bag and my bivy bag i break open the foam roll and i slip it over the top of my sleeping bag then here's where the silver comes in now i can put my silver on top of the foam and it's going to do one of two things this is going to act as an isolator, i.e. it's putting a barrier between the Gore-Tex bivy bag and the foam. So it's going to take longer for the cold to get in to the foam and then in to my sleeping bag and then into me. A lot of people will argue that it's the other way around. That this needs to be on top of my sleeping bag this silver here and then it reflects your body heat i'm not trying to reflect my body heat but this pad in itself is producing the extra insulation i would rather have a barrier between the gore-tex and my sleeping bag or in this case my gore-tex and my pad so I'm going to get in, take my shoes off, obviously, drape this over and put this over the top of the foam. Now I'm going to leave it up to you if you want to put this under the foam or on top of the foam. I suggest you try both methods, see what works for you. And that's your method. If it works for you, it's right. Don't let anyone tell you that you should be doing something different just because it works for them. So whether you put this reflective on the outside of the foam or underneath i'm going to leave that choice up to you one you can use it as radiation throwing body energy back two you can use it as an isolator and that will prevent the cold coming into your gore-tex in the first place and i'd rather that it keeps the cold from coming into my gore-tex before i get into the actual sleeping bag i'll give you very quick demo and show you what's happening. I'm inside my bivy bag and I'm inside the actual sleeping bag also. Last thing I need to do is to get my foam and just bring it over my chest like this. 
and it makes a little air gap if you're lucky if you have a wide bivy bag bring over this reflector as well that i'm using as an isolator remember to keep the cold from coming in in the first place rather than use it as a radiator if you want to use radiation then put the silver over your sleeping bag and then the foam but remember if you do this the cold will come through your bivy bag and start making your foam cold that is what i don't want this is why i have the silver on the outside i don't want my foam going cold in the middle of the night i'm just going to undo the bivy bag unzip the sleeping bag shoes off stand into the sleeping bag i haven't got a ground pad underneath me at the moment in the form of an air pad or another foam roll which you'll need for ground insulation this is only a demonstration that goes without saying at least it should now generally i'm good now in the sleeping bag for around six hours or so just get my foam roll bring it inside with me it's going over the top of the sleeping bag here's the foam roll I'm not doing my sleeping bag up all the way I'm going to bring this foam up over my chest even that alone is going to increase your core temperature in the middle of the night but to prevent the cold hitting the outside of your bivy bag and making the foam cold there's where your reflective comes in make sure that foam's covered now the idea of course is i can roll in my sleeping bag so my sleeping bag is rolling with me but the foam stays in an arch shape over me so it's covering my back as i roll so i have full coverage from my chin down to my waist here and like i said it goes without saying you're going to need another bit of foam or an air pad underneath you this is only to increase your temperature inside the sleeping bag that's not quite hitting those lower limits and you don't want to go out and buy another sleeping bag but you've probably got a spare pad that you can just make into a three-quarter length with a pair of scissors and that is how it's done now a lot of people at this point are going to be very concerned what about my feet in a cooler sleeping bag remember this is meant to be fit for purpose but i don't think it's amazing is what i'm saying i think there's a bit of bs going on on the temperature rating how to warm your feet something simple like a hot water bottle now i always bring one every camp especially winter and that can be one of them rubber hot water bottles or in my case i have a steel nalgene water bottle and i boil up some water in the steel nalgene that steel nalgene goes into a sock that goes down the bottom so this isn't something you could do with a jungle sleeping bag and then go below zero you need a sleeping bag that claims to be fit for purpose but when you've tested it it isn't a simple foam roll adds thickness of insulation around the core technically you could do it with the whole sleeping bag but the roll would be massive that's why i only concentrate on my core there is where all the cold is going to come from because i have a cold sleeping bag resting on my chest because it hasn't dissipated for the full 12 hours it's gone cold at something like five hours this way it happens with some sleeping bags and yours might be the same now you can keep your whole system in the roll as i did when i came in or you can use this stuffing method or if you have to which i'm not a fan of 
but if you have to, you can put your sleeping bag into a stuff sack and then your stuff sack into your pack and you can put your bevy bag into a stuff sack and put your bevy bag in to the pack. You can have stuff sacks for everything if that's the way you want to go. But I already have a waterproof cover here with the Gore-Tex. I don't carry very many individual components to my packs. That's why I can afford to pack larger kit and yet it's still lightweight. I think I have a six piece system. I have three piece system and then maybe a luxury item and a cook set, things like that. When I came into the camp this morning, all I did was lay this on top of my sleeping bag and rolled it and in a roll I put it into my pack but this can now just sit on top and it might look a little more traditional for you like this and you might feel a little more comforted by seeing something like this or not. Now could you do the same with a three quarter length air pad rather than a foam roll. Not tested that. I can't see why it wouldn't work, provided it has a you know a pretty good R value of certainly 2.2 to 3. If you have an R value air pad of say four, no problem, no problem at all. I have no idea what the our value of that pad is this is what mechanics used to lie on to go under cars before they had a little board with wheels they had to put something like this under a car and crawl underneath it and that concrete was incredibly cold in the winter this foam has poly plastics in which is what makes this incredibly warm it is not a yoga mat and your army mats are something like an IXPE, which is a composite. This foam is got polyplastics in, which is illegal to buy new. They don't sell polyplastics anymore. So if you do find anything like this, keep it, look after it, and make sure you dispose of it correctly. Because not all foam rolls are created equal. One guy in the comments said, you told me you can't get these mats anymore. I went down my local outdoor market and got a yoga mat. Of course they sell them. And it's like the guy wasn't listening. Those kind of yoga mats don't have a very high R value. They have some R value, but it's low. So if you are thinking of using the yoga mat on the ground, yes, it will work, but they are just warmer is what I'm saying. And those yoga mats are made of a PVC. The PVC glue, along with all the other composites, as where this, no PVC in this, it is polyplastics, little tiny micro dots of plastic, which is why I said, make sure your pad is up to the job, or perhaps test an air pad to do the same, provided it's a three quarter length. Use whatever kit you have, test it, adapt it. That's what I've done here. So I am gonna get a proper sleeping bag fit for purpose to take me down to minus 30 C because I'm a cold sleeper. I'm gonna lose 20 degrees of that easily. And that big sleeping bag is gonna be a lot of money. It's gonna take me a long time to save up for. But until that time, while I'm saving up, I can cheat and use something like this. And this is a lot lighter and a lot more compact than buying a huge Arctic bag. If you are in between buying sleeping bags, you can still use your old one. Just get a bit of foam over you. And remember the idea between having that reflective inside the foam or on top of the foam depends on if you want an isolator or a radiator. The radiator is throwing back heat to your body, but also the cold then is making my foam roll cold because that cold is hitting 
my Gore-Tex. My Gore-Tex is then hitting the pad. The pad is then hitting the reflective, then the sleeping bag, then me. I prefer the other way around. I like to use the radiation barrier as an isolating barrier. In other words, it's taking longer for the cold to get through the Gore-Tex and then hitting the pad by which time the pad is working and then my sleeping bag's working I'm warm it's time to wake up and instead of needing to wake up half five six in the morning perhaps you can have a lazy lie in till midday with this system and a slightly poorly performing sleeping bag until next time take care of yourself and I'll see you out there happy trails